Electronic waste is the fastest growing waste stream in the world. When Gothenburg turns 400 years, 2021, we will have 5,200 Eiffel Towers of electronic scrap in the world. And if we don't do something, the picture you saw in the beginning, that situation will only increase, and that can not happen. Many times, out of sight is out of mind. In the modern world, out of sight is not longer possible. For sure, ladies and gentlemen, out of mind can not be any longer. We have to act, and we have to act now. Or actually, we had to act yesterday. And how should we act? Well, we should do serious recycling. And serious recycling is not just what we do at Stena TechnoWorld. Serious recycling is from the recycling industry to the collective scheme, serious collective scheme, producers, serious producers, national authorities. Everything has to be serious to handle the recycling industry. And yes, recycling is further down on, on the hierarchy, but I think we have to go up a couple of steps as well and look at this. We will continue to have recycling. Some of you were down at Amistad yesterday, and there you saw serious recycling. <laughs> this has to improve even further. I will talk today about three problems. There are a number of problems and challenges within the electronic recycling industry. But I will highlight three problems. One problem is actually volume. Only 35% of the volumes is landing in certified recyclers in Europe. That is the question, what happens with the rest of the volume? Well, it's probably recycled, it's maybe even reused, but do we have control over it? Or does it land in the pictures that we saw in the beginning? We don't know, you don't know. <coughs> Brussels doesn't know. But for sure, this is a huge problem. We did, together with the uh, uh, European Recycling Association, a study as well about scavenging. And there is a lot of scavenging, even in the material that comes into the recycling industry. And this we also have to act on, how to improve. And I will be challenging as well, with the professor from, from Chalmers just said, be proactive, uh, proactive, and I will be as well. I would say, EU's well is a doubt. We have the WE Directive. We have the Basel Convention signed by 185 states. We have waste shipment regulations. How could this then happen? Where is the compliance? Where is the enforcement? Where is the consequences? I would say we in Europe have something, in some ways, to learn from China in this aspect. China had a problem. They imported over 50 million tons of waste into China per year. What did they do? Well, they said, Beijing, we have a problem. Fix the problem. They said, close the borders. National sword. Waste should not be imported into China. We in Europe, we know the problems we have in collection. We know we have scavenging. We know that we are exporting material out of Europe to places where it should not be. But why do we not act? The industry as such, electronic recycling industry, as well the producer uh, collective schemes, uh, are actually saying, let's have enforcement. Let's put in the standards that exist. There exists a standard for, for recycling industry, the settling. Put it mandatory. We want to have it. Authorities right now say no. Second problem is our consumer behavior. We heard about that a couple of minutes ago as well. We are buying, you're buying for your kids, you're buying it for your house, a new TV because it's Olympics. We're buying a new coffee machine because it should be black instead of, of, of silver. We're buying a new phone because it's upgrade of, of software. Uh, and that is, of course, it's a behavior, and we're talking about GDP, etc., etc., which is then a, in some way positive, but as well sometimes negative. At the same time, it gives an opportunity because we can then start to reuse it. 
but then we have to be serious in how we handle the reuse. Today, it's actually cheaper for our responsible for sales selling one container from Gothenburg to Hong Kong, shipment time term, than sending a container from Gothenburg to Amsterdam. That will probably continue for a while, but that means as well that the situation is we will have number of exports into Asia, and that will continue. But we have to secure with serious recycling, serious reuse, that the material we are actually shipping is treated in the correct way. With serious recycling, we could have downstream monitoring all the way down to, even if it's into to, to a flat screen into Indonesia, we could say, this is the material where it's landing, this is how it's treated, this is how the mercury is treated, this is how the plastic is treated, this is where it ends up. Serious recyclers do that. A third problem I would like to highlight, and that's plastic. Plastic, as you know, it's not only plastic, it's all these combination of, of letters that I will not even try to say. And on top of that, it's all the different colors as well. Is this a problem? Yeah, it's a problem because the industry as such, and we have done an analyze together with our partner Bolid and our partner Chalmers a couple of years ago, where we saw that all the valuables that actually the recycling industry were working with is actually decreasing. And the first time I wrote this slide, I had the black, the arrow for plastic as red. Now I say that arrow should be green because we have to treat that material and use it in the best way. Closing the loop of plastic is possible. Yesterday, the left corner here, or the pile, was exported to China. We were one of the few that actually took away all the brominated plastic and exported it. That is not possible today with the national sword. Which means we have to go all the way to Emily's hand over there and deliver pure plastics, pure pellets. The possibility is there, the drive is there, and I would say like this, it's very positive and I would like to emphasize here today, we have a very good dialogue together with Eltrets that are responsible for the collective scheme in Sweden to go here. And I'm happy to say this is the possibility, this is what we have to do long term. And we have to do it now. We have to create that it's no excuse, neither for producers, nor collective schemes, nor sales company, not to use plastic, recycled plastic going forward. And I think we are in the time plan, plan that this is possible now. We will do it. I think it's important that the whole society is looking at the plastic issue. To compromise this then, we're talking about three problems and they are more or less all related to three, these three things. Compliance. We have to secure compliance in this industry. Independent if it's a recycling industry, independent if it's a collective scheme, independent if it's a producer, independent if it's a national EPA, compliance is a must. Because if we have compliance, we will secure that the volumes are increasing. And that means the recycling industry can do investments going forward to secure that the material that will and has to be recycled will be recycled. But if we don't have compliance, and still a lot of volume is going out, how will we get the volumes so we can do the investments? And how can the recycling industry secure right quality for the producers regarding, for example, plastic? The recycling industry will do the investments. The volumes will come. But I would say to you who are coming from the European Union and also the local authorities, have to push compliance. And it has to be consequences if the industry as such, and we're part of the industry, is not compliant. This is important, this is a game changer, and it has to change. Because if it not change, someone else will not save our planet. Someone else will not solve the problems. It's up to us, and we have to secure that Ikea, us and small little children there in the picture, is getting a correct future, that our kids are getting a correct future. 
and it's up to us. It's, no one else will do it. And I think, from that perspective, it starts here. It starts with you, it starts with me, how we behave, and we're part of that game, and we will secure that it changes, and it starts here. Thank you very much.